I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. No, that's fine. I mean, to be fair, like, full disclosure, one of our earlier episodes, I lost all of my audio recording and re-recorded you, all of my own parts. You told me about that. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, is impressive, considering the fact that I didn't notice. Yeah. And I was the person who helped you. Rec- I was the person recording with you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a little bit horrifying to think about because that just means that our conversations are predictable between each other. There is. Well, also, I remembered a lot of it. (laughs) That's that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so this time I'm not going to hit my space bar button. Okay, yeah, yeah. We won't re-record some of it. (laughs) Yeah. Regardless, what ended up happening was I got too excited over toys. So Mm -hmm. that that piece of audio is lost. And then space bar happened. Yeah. Yep. Um... So, this week, um, in the area where I live, they're shooting some horror uh, TV shows Ooh. for uh, for Hulu, which is interesting and fun, and I crashed the set a few times and, and walked around. There's, like, scissor lifts and green screens. Yeah, yeah. Um, the part I find confusing is that it's supposed to be Lafayette, Mardi Gras, so we have the... Purple, green, and gold flags everywhere. They hung up a bunch of, like, bar signs for bars that aren't there. Yep, yep. Um, All the uh, different stores, like, they're getting money because they have to be shut down for a while. Mm -hmm. But I was outside with some friends the other night, and uh, we were looking around and um, trying to figure out how anybody can act like it is Mardi Gras in Lafayette when it's 20 degrees in November in New York. Yeah, that's actually fair. Yeah. That's legitimately a fair concern. Like, how are you going to act <laughs> like you're not so cold? So cold. I, hey, they get paid to be empty vessels. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, yeah. It's weird how our area has become like Hollywood East. It has, and newspapers have started calling it that. It's yeah. tax incentives, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... A Quiet Place was shot down the road. It was. Yeah. (laughs) That... Have you seen A Quiet Place, by the way? I've not seen... I don't watch movies that are shot around here because it interrupts my commute home from work. Frequently. That's that's reasonable one, but... Yeah, because you you pretty much are in the perfect place for getting interrupted by movies being shot. All the time. We've had HBO, Hulu... Um, just general movies. Like, well, well, yeah. the HBO shoot, they had all the cars stored in my part, my work parking lot. Did they, they had a lot by the cemetery too. The one by my Oh, house. did they? Yeah. The, which cemetery is that? The, um. The one that connects to 209. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hashtag local talk. Yeah. No. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I'm never going to not stop talking local. That's what I know. Yeah. That's exactly. I'm from, I'm born and raised this area. <laughs> That's all I got. I, had I can a talk. I can weird conversation the other day with some people yeah. where I was in one of the local bars and uh, apparently I say some words with an accent. So people were like, yo, where are you from? Like, they're like, repeat that word, repeat it, say it again, say it again. I was like, I'm from here the whole time. I've always been here. So I've I just had, have my own accent on some I've had words. people do that to me, too. Yes? Yeah. One time I was talking to a guy from, at like, the Dutchess County Fair. Yeah. Because I was a kid, right? And um, basically, if you don't know, which you probably don't if you're listening to this podcast, Dutchess County Fair for a while, for even still, it's like a really big country music thing. Like, oh, still? They had the still. big bopper one day. Yeah, yeah, they have they well they have some crazy acts that show yeah. show up, right? Um now you have to pay yet to actually see some of them. Mm-hmm. It used to be you could just walk in and watch it for free. 
right? It was a part of your ticket price. Yeah. Um, so regardless, my family was waiting for a show to start and me being about 13 at the time, I didn't want to sit still. So what I did was I walked over to the, the food booth, the food pavilion, yeah. and just got samples constantly. Like, I think I Fair. went up and down that Fair. I, <laughs> I went up and down that sample tent like at least 10 times that day, right? And then at one point, I decided to take a break from eating all the samples, and I sat in some of those, you know those like uh, hammock chairs? Yes. Um, I was sitting in one of them and talking to the dude who runs it because... Despite being a very introverted and like not able to deal with people person, once you're hopped up on fair food, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, no. So I was talking to him. He's like, I just can't understand your up your upstate accent. And I'm like, what? I'm from here. Yeah. <laughs> like we're from the same spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just, New York's a weird place. <laughs> it is. And just people have accents for no reason, I guess. Like, I was out, I was eating Chinese food with some people. Yeah. I was like, I was telling them about my cats. And, uh-huh. uh, normal stuff. Yeah, normal stuff. I was showing cat pictures and all of that. Mm-hmm. And then I, I got stopped, and then four people were around me, and they're like, say cat again. And I was like, cat. And they're like, that's not how you say that. Where are you from? And I was like, no, they're cats. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I- know. Because they were, ha- um, Dude. like, no, it's cat. And I was like, no, it's cat. Like, it's cat. And then we got a whole, I was like, no, say what comes out of cows. Because I know some people um, that say milk. And uh, mm-hmm. I say milk. But, like. Milk. Yeah, it's milk. Some people say bagel. Um, I guess there's. Bagel. Twist- yeah, no. Uh, we know, if we have you- a mutual friend who says bagel and who says- milk. Who says bagel and milk? They're uh, they're big into conspiracy theories. <laughs> I I feel like mutual friend is very very. <laughs> that's a strong word. <laughs> I feel like at this point it's mutual acquaintance. Yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that's bagel and milk. Oh, you know what? He did say that. You're right. Now, now yeah. that I'm thinking back, yeah, he did say bagel and milk, milk, yep. a uh, lot, like a I, just a lot. I got, I got one time someone became obsessed with the way I said water. Like, well, you say ab- water like you're from New Jersey a little bit, not full. You're like, you say water like you're halfway between New York and New Jersey. It was someone from like Louisiana though. Like they were obsessed with it. They were like, say water. Well, actually, they didn't say say water. They say, they said say water, and I was like, <laughs> water. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. Everyone here says water. Um, if you're from Jersey, say water. Um, yeah, that's just how. Yeah, I get it. It's efficient. I mean, it's not. It's called lazy tongue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with a lazy tongue, it's a great thing that I record podcasts. Oh yeah. Yeah, I give everyone nicknames because they're real names, too many syllables, and uh, they think it's like a fun, cute thing, and I'm just like, no, I just don't want to say your name because three syllables is a lot. That's fair. Yeah. That is actually fair. My uh, my name's weird because it's not even, it's not really, if you give me a nickname, it, it's, all my nicknames have been longer than my actual name. They're, well, yeah, because you have a short name. I do. It's yeah. a single syllable. It's monosyllabic. So, yeah. and that's my actual name. Yeah. The, the uh, most people, I call them by the first letter of their first name if they have more than two syllables. So be like, yo, E, C. Like, wh- <laughs> that's just what to I be, do. Well, to be fair, like, if you said that to me, yo, J, it would have been just as easy to say John. Yeah, that's why I just say John. <laughs> and that's why I call J, J. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh talking of jays oh mm-hmm. do you remember that time we had to drive the le- the person who owned the local game store home yes that was a weird night that was a weird night like i 
the reason it happened was because I think we were both too awkward to say no. Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely got me in some uh, fun situations. But yes, too awkward to say no could definitely uh, describe both of us. Yes. I, yeah. I've done some weird stuff because I just couldn't say no to people. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've said no to some things, but like... Most of my stuff is pretty innocuous. The stuff I say I don't say no to, but man, it's been weird. <laughs> it's I have without going into details. Yep, that's been fair. too awkward to say no about certain things where I ended up driving someone else's truck <laughs> because they didn't have a license but still had the truck just right there to a <sighs> spot and then Something happened, and they turned to me, and they said, if anyone asks anything, you're my boss. Right now, you're my boss. And then, like, there's like a, oh, God, they're coming out. (coughs) Roll down the window. Remember, you're my boss. And then just pretended to be someone's boss before. So, uh... In the sketchy spot of town, too. Of Kingston? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm going to type a name into our chat. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. So Continue. I was told a story by that individual Yeah. about the time that he picked someone up who is also somebody we know. Um, oh, 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 I'm so he happy. Picked, he picked that person up and that person... No, he was picked up by that person. Reverse yeah. it. So... He was walking down uptown. Yeah. And this other person shows up, says, hey, you want to go somewhere with me? He's like, yeah, sure. Cut to three hours later, he's in D.C. at like a climate march or something. And he ends up spending the night at that person's, like some random person that person knows his house. And he's just like, and then on the way back, uh, the person who just picked him up is like, Philly, we got to go to Philly. We got to get a Philly (laughs) cheesesteak. So the penalty for walking down the street and getting picked up by someone for our one friend was literally a two-day journey. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Which (laughs) I think has everything. It's like the perfect encapsulation of everything. I used to work by uh, near Philly uh, Mm -hmm. in Warminster. And fun fact... They just call it cheesesteak, so, I mean, they're like, oh, you're from out of town because you go, Philly cheesesteak, and their pizza is terrible, because they're like, yes. hey, do you want to get, get pizza? And I said, yes, and it's just single human-sized pizzas. Yeah, I'm going to say this, um, pizza outside of New York um, or Jersey is the worst. Yeah, the only thing that's re- even close to okay is in Chicago, but it's not pizza, it's Chicago deep dish. Yeah, They're no, different. it's soup that's in the form of pizza. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's good, but it's not pizza. I wouldn't call it good. We'll agree to disagree on that one. Also, uh, best pizza ever, uh, which will be surprising, Kennedy's. That, I did have the Kennedy's pizza when I was at your house, yeah. so. It's good. It was pretty good. I put garlic, salt, and hot sauce on it. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess if you're listening, um, welcome to Cryptopedia. <laughs> An exploration no. of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Uh, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely hides under your bed. I'm Brandon. Uh, I'm John. And we just do local talk a lot. (laughs) We do, actually. And not going to lie, there's an episode coming up where I'm probably going to just read that book, that book of ghost stories I found a couple episodes back. Oh, are you? Good. I'm a little bit excited. (laughs) Yeah. I, um, yeah. The, 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 I, I haven't done any work for the next episode because I hit like a weird mental funk for the past month. Okay. So, but I haven't, I know exactly what my next three episodes are going to be. Yeah. It's just, I haven't finished them. Yeah. No, that's fair. (laughs) That's fair. It's been a weird month for a bunch of different people. It has been a weird month. 
Um, so this week's creature, not to trigger you. I, 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 so I'm not going to guess because I opened it already and yeah. I'm already triggered. Okay. It's a pterosaur in appearance. It was seen in 1903. It roams around Iowa and it has not been seen recently. You're not going to guess because you've opened it already, but this week's monster is the Van Meter monster. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's it. a fair reaction. I hate it. I, I already know where this is going to go, and I hate it. Also, I scroll to the bottom, and that's an amazing picture. So, <laughs> I'm very excited for this episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be decent. <laughs> yeah. This... So I'm glad that I wasn't the one who have to, had to do research on this because anytime I do research on ter- on dinosaur cryptids, I get angry. Yeah, that's why I was sort of like, I'll grab this one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably for the best because yeah. I think there's been at least three episodes that I've gotten angry on that relate to pterodactyls now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to find it. It's John yells for an hour. That's all yep. I know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's, it's an old one. Yeah. So we'll start. We'll start by saying, imagine having an, a smartphone in 1903, and what that could have done for you in Van Meter. That instead of shouldering shotguns and blasting away at an eight foot winged creature with a forehead horn that cast a beam of light, uh, the panic citizens could have just put that on YouTube. Case closed, monster confirmed. So we're talking about a Pokemon at this point. Yeah, this is a Pokemon. They saw Pokemon. Okay. All right, yeah. good. Uh, Which <laughs> is topical because at the time of recording, Pokemon only came out three yeah. days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still haven't played. They'll probably be later today, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's it's super good. People were compl- giving it a lot of shit. I love it. So I far. love Pokemon. I love playing Pokemon on a big screen. It's actually really great. Yeah, it's the best. Uh, so camping out uh, all night, 110 years later, at an old coal mine outside of a town where the alleged creature is believed to have lived, a researcher of odd legends is still trying to catch sight of it. Why? She- I don't know. Like, like, let's be real. If, if it was only seen once, 110 years ago, even if it was a real thing, it's definitely dead. And that's oh, yeah. not a that's not a breeding population. No, like <laughs> that's uh, not at all. Uh, okay, there's I saw a Netflix movie that's a little bit similar. I forget what it's called. Uh, but Chad Lewis survived the assignment. He was not abducted nor scooped up by the flying creature, uh, but he has a good story to tell in his wanderings of Van Meter. He unearthed a legend that was dying out with the old timers, and tonight he will tell it at the old high school gym. <laughs> Yes, the so, height of the height of intellectual discourse. Yes, the high school gym. Why not? Mm, <laughs> yes, uh, over there, Timmy vomited after he tried to climb the rope. Oh, yeah. um, Here's where Dory Jimmy broke got a, a leg. <laughs> yep, yep. John was playing was was dressed as a ninja and just playing with stuff over there. I don't know. It was weird. It's called Naruto. Yeah. Oh God, have I ever told you about the time that I went to a school dance alone, like a Halloween dance? No. And my Halloween costume was a ninja. That's I believe that. And I just kind of was playing with streamers in the corner the whole time. Oh, I would do the same I, thing though. I thought I was supposed to go I thought like going to the dance was a thing that people did because it was middle school and it was not something for me. I found out. That was the point that I found that out. Also, I think that was also the time that somebody stabbed someone with a CD case. Oh, yeah. 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 No, that happened. So, yeah, someone stabbed someone with a CD case. I was dressed as a ninja in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm just picturing that again. The, uh, the story offers a glimpse of rural Iowa history and lore. The superstitious mindset uh, at the turn of the last century oddly mirrors a resurgent 21st century trend of Bigfoot hunting and paranormal investigation that populate the cable television today. Uh, Lewis also appeared on a network and on TV shows to discuss his monster 
and alien chasing across the gro- ac- across the globe words. But the Minneapolis 38-year-old uh, said he was particularly cap- captivated by a creature he dubbed the Van Meter Monster. He s- purposely chose a non-threatening name and shouldn't assume the wind creature did not come in peace. What? Yeah, so okay. there's already assumptions. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of assumptions that are already getting slung around by this mm-hmm. story. A whole bunch. Okay. So the story is as follows, that over a series of five nights from early morning Tuesday, September 29th, through October 3rd, 1903, uh, several respected and prominent men of Van Meter uh, reported a half-human, half-animal with enormous bat wings flying around. Uh, it lot, let off a powerful stench and scared the daylights out of them because it moved at speeds never seen before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's 1903, so I guess so, any kind of fast is generally fast. Yeah, so I'm imagining that it's going like 10 miles an hour, and it's like, <laughs> look at how fast that thing's going. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, it also shot a blinding light from its horned head. Um they were blitzed out of their mind. Probably. There's no, like, it's, Just, so it's yeah. 1903, uh, where is this? Van uh, Meter. Iowa? Yeah. Yeah, Iowa, they've got nothing to do but drink. It's just rye everywhere. Yeah, it's just a bunch of rye, and like, they're they're probably blitzed out of their mind. It's probably just a bird with like, is that so, you know what, I bet you one of them tied a, tied a mirror to a bird's head. Oh, As a that'd joke. be great. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> and everyone else was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> for for each sighting, shots were fired each time. First by implement dealer U.G. Griffith. Um, so, yeah. I love the, the, I love the name implement dealer. I don't know what now, that means. Yeah, that, that's why I'm, I'm curious because does it mean farming implements? Or does it mean guns? It might just be it, like just implements in g- uh, general. I'm assuming guns. It's probably guns. I, I uh, well, with a name like UG Griffith, it can't not be guns. Yeah, like yeah. it's he's got his, he's got a name to live up to. Like yes, uh, Andy Griffith has not come around to turn that name around yet. No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> and even then, he carried a gun. So, so Griffith noticed what he thought was a spotlight moving around on the rooftop on one of the downtown buildings. At first, he thought it might be a burglar, but then he approached it, jumped to another rooftop across the street, and disappeared. Oh, God. Uh, as it so flew across it's still, the building it's... tops, around 1 a.m., the monster shrugged them off uh, like a minor nuisance. Okay. So, yeah, rooftop jumping, 1 a.m., he's drinking. Yeah, he's probably drinking, first of all. Second of all, this sounds an awful lot like spring Jack. In some ways. It, I thought the same thing. Which is, which I'm pretty sure we both, I think we both agree it was just a drunk dude. It's, <laughs> that's probable. Like, I think, I think we don't give drunk people enough credit for the crazy shit that they do. I saw a guy fight a chair the other day. A what? A chair. Yeah, Those I'll things believe that. On. I was sitting yeah. down and then I turned and, um. There's just a man fighting a chair, and and like everyone else turned, it was like, oh, that's pretty funny, and then and then it got serious. We're like, what did that chair say to him? So like four other people had to break him up from the chair. I'm imagining one person holding the chair, like, man, he's not worth it. He's not worth it. <laughs> it was, it was so good. Like, I just observed, and it was. That thing happened that um, people who drink too much do when they try to, like, console each other, where, like, <laughs> he was separated from the chair, and then just another gentleman who was like, you should probably go home right now, was doing that thing where, like, they hold each other's heads with their foreheads touching, like, it'll be okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Like, what is, how did that? How did that become a thing? Because that is a thing I've seen a lot. It's a thing, and I don't know where that came from. But that's not what I thought I would see after watching a man try to, like, just fight. Like, full fight. Like, stood it up, 
got distance, then ran and like did a kick and then some punches and then stood it back up and ran to a kick. And, like it was. Did he look like he was he was just fucking around or did he actually look angry at the chair? He didn't look angry, but he didn't look like he was just messing around. I think it was just. He got to a mental spot where he thought I should fight a chair right now. I just want to know what he viewed that chair as. Like, I want to, I would pay good money to just, like, temporarily invade his mind space and just see what that chair looked like to him in that moment. That, it would be fantastic. It was nothing special. I mean, no. it's just a rickety chair. <laughs> I'm assuming it was, like, practically a bar stool then, right? Yeah, well, it was a bar, it was a chair that was bar like, like, height, but it had okay, a back so, to it. Yeah, it was one of those high back chairs yeah. that, you know, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like an island chair at a in a house. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. God, I, I just <laughs> I'm imagining him like like hallucinating like Gilligan's Island style. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great if now I'm imagining if this was in a Gilligan's Island episode, which I haven't seen in years. Nobody has. I don't yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> um I'm imagining them like the the people who filmed it. They they turn the chair into a puppet, like the coconuts. Oh yes! And then the chair's just like, "Hey, bitch, want to go?" <laughs> There's. I think what happened was he might have been in a mood, and then Primus came on, and then he was like, "I'm fighting a chair." Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so the next night around one a.m. The town doctor and bank cashier Pete Dunn had encounters. Uh, after hearing about the previous night's encounter, Mr. Dunn felt he should watch over the bank. Fearing burglars, he brought along his shotgun for the night's watch. Around 1 a.m., he heard a strangling noise outside. Before he could investigate it, um, he was hit full in the face by a blinding beam of light that shone through the front window. The light suddenly switched off and then back on again as if um, scanning the room. Finally swinging back at him, he could make out, quote, some kind of great form behind the light. Dunn fired his shotgun at the mysterious being uh, right through the bank's front window, uh, and then it vanished. Uh, in the morning, he noticed sets of large three-toed footprints outside the bank and claimed to have uh, made plaster casts of them. So he's just a bank cashier. Yeah, and he shot out the window. So, what's the deal with people being out and about at 1 a.m., basically, though? I don't know. That's probably it's, just it's, bad, like, that's just bad habits. Don't, it's, don't do it, that. It, it's Iowa. Yeah. It's Iowa in 1903. Like, I don't like to leave the house at 1 a.m., and it's now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. I, I blame whiskey probably for them. Uh, whiskey is a very real possibility. Yeah. So Dr. Alcott, the town doctor, was sleeping in his room at his office when he was awoken by a bright light shining into his face through the window. He rushed outside with a gun uh, <laughs> in hand, only to discover the source of the light was a tall humanoid bat -like, with bat-like wings. Uh, the blinding light came from a blunt horn on the creature's forehead. He fired five shots at close range. Uh, after seeing the shots had no noticeable effect, he fled. The, f <laughs> the following what night, the, fuck? the like, bulletproof Batman. It's it's. Uh, why is every single one of these stories like? And it was a it was immortal. Like our yeah. second episode ever. Uh, the the Enfield Horror literal same story. Yep. Right. It's like. Uh, it, it's very much like. Um, it's people saying like, "Oh, I couldn't have missed. I couldn't." Have I missed. think so. Like, there's no way I could have missed, and it's like you clearly missed. Yes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you shoot with a shotgun at that range. It's gonna get hurt. Yeah. Like <laughs> they just won't fess up to being bad shots. Yeah. Even if it's even if you're wearing body armor, if you get hit by more than one shot at that range. It's still gonna hurt. Oh yeah. Oh, I think right? even if you're wearing body armor, if you get shot once, it'll still hurt. It'll still hurt. If you get shot more than once, what will happen is if like 
unless you're wearing like dragon scale um the well, way that Kevin... dragon scale like because that's just crack ceramic afterwards like that'll yeah. still suck well well dragon scale has the benefit of multiple ceramic plates oh yeah whereas whereas like standard kevlar builds they typically will break and then you're you basically aren't wearing a bulletproof vest anymore yeah after you get shot once mm. so yeah so the following night ov white was jolted awake <clears throat> by Metallic. These names. They're fantastic, just old-timey why, names. Why does nobody have a... Like, why is it... I guess it's to save on printing costs, probably. Maybe? I don't know. Right? Because, like, I, that's the only thing I could think of, because it's like, why are all these people, like, abbreviating their names? Like, yeah. at the very least, just do Mr. White. Or, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, why OV? Yeah. Why why UG Griffith? I mean UG Griffith has a better ring to it than Mr. Griffith. It does. I will say there's more alliteration in that. Mm-hmm. Cuz the G's there. Yes. So the uh the following night OV White was jolted awake by a metallic rasping sound outside his second floor room above his hardware store in Main Street. He grabbed his gun and moved towards the window. Outside he saw the visitor perched close <sighs> by on the crossbeam of a telephone pole. White a known marksman took deliberate aim and fired at the creature, and it, that also had no effect. Only seemed to awaken the visitor. The creature emitted a, a stupefying odor that overpowered White, knocking him unconscious. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. I am no stranger to o- odors that are nearly lethal. Oh, All yes. Right? Um, not only do I produce them, but one time I almost died in a car accident because of one. Oh, I'm well aware. Yes, that's the most infinite night that shall live on forever. Infamous night that shall live on forever. Um, however, yes, even in the case of a skunk, I don't think it's gonna knock you unconscious. No, like it's just the stanky stank. It's just stanky stank. Yeah. Now, if we assume that Mister White was drunk, however, fair assumption. <laughs> why is why does everyone? I feel like this is a very American thing to grab your gun the second you hear something weird. Oh, probably. Like, like, I know it was 1903, but that's not like too long ago. No, it wasn't like it was super unsafe. Yeah, even in Iowa, like mm-hmm. the West had been the West was one already. Yeah, at that point. So, like, why is your first instinct to take a gun? I don't know. Maybe, don't know. maybe, maybe, maybe just because I'm afraid of guns as a rule. That's fair. They can hurt like, people. Like I, 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 I just my mind doesn't jump to the. I need to use a gun for this problem. Yeah. I don't oh. know. The uh, the shots awoke White's neighbor Sidney Gregg, who raced outside to see what the commotion was about. He watched in disbelief as the monster descended the uh, telephone pole after the manner of a parrot. <laughs> using its huge beak upon reaching the ground it stood erect and by mr greg's estimates it was quote at least eight feet high whatever it was the light from its forehead was bright as an electric headlight the light okay. again darted up <laughs> yeah the- so so i yeah. was uh, okay i'm gonna pause you for a second yes i didn't know when electric headlights were invented i was assuming i was giving the benefit of the doubt that flashlights didn't exist but, but now that this is in, now that this is a part of the equation, yeah, this casts doubt in my entire brain about oh, the story, as it should. Like instantaneously, all the red lights are going off in my head. Like, so is it just some dude wearing an electric, like, like a headlamp, like a headlamp because it's one a.m. and they're and by a coal weird. mine. Yeah, and he's yeah. weird. Yeah, oh. but it got to the ground, and I, I guess the light whipped around again in a searching motion. The creature paused for a moment before taking off towards the coal mine. So, uh, even the local high school teacher saw it and deemed it some sort of uh, antediluvian monster, uh, which means because I had to Google that, I didn't know what that yeah. was of or belonging to the time of the biblical biblical flood. So. Oh. Boy, so yeah, that's that's a whole thing. Well, because that's what they called dinosaurs for a while, like antediluvian. Yeah. Um, I mean, God damn it! 
that's <sighs> fair. This is this is starting to trigger my my <clears throat> frustration it's a sensors. Because, uh, like, Occam's razor says it's just some dude wearing a headlamp. Yes. Because, like, like I will say this. I've been outside, and I've had people shine lights in my face. Uh-huh. It's very disorienting at night. Very disorienting. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. And especially if they have this weird climbing style where they're grabbing, where they're, they're smacking their face against a pole as they cl- yeah. climb down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just struggling because if it's humanoid in appearance, right? I'm thinking humanoid means that you saw arms. Yeah, typically. like bipedal saw arms. Yeah, yeah. Because because otherwise I wouldn't call it humanoid. Because mm. that's that's those are like the two identifying factors. Like if I saw a giant bird, I wouldn't call it humanoid. Right? No, I would not either. So if it's a if it's pterodactyl like, if we're gonna use the thing from the very beginning, right? Yeah. If it's pterodactyl like, I probably wouldn't call a pterodactyl humanoid. I'd probably call no. it a giant bird. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that's confusing about this this description. Oh yeah. No, you're not alone. Yeah. The uh so it seems that there's never a decent pitchfork and torch gathering these days. But back then the townsmen were not so adverse to taking up arms and forming a posse. So to the northwest side of Van Meter they charged, near the old brickyard, where J. L. Platt and Jr heard a noise down by the abandoned coal mine. Uh, presently, the no- the noise opened up again as though Satan <laughs> and a regiment of imps were coming forth for battle. <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> According to an article in the Des Moines Daily News, October 3rd, 1903. Man, that's pretty great. That's some pretty colorful language. Oh, yes. And um, then, yeah. Uh, it's just, this, this sounds like... It, experiences that I've had when I was a teenager in high school. Oh, yeah. Like, I can literally point you to this. And it's all things that I experienced while hanging out with a single person. You uh-huh. know who that person is. Yes, I do. <laughs> Just imagine a town full of that person. And here's what you get. Oh, God. The, uh, the monster appeared, joined by a smaller version in a brilliant light. They sailed away, only to return in the morning, where the men had gathered to, quote... <laughs> To rid the earth of them with their firepower heard far and wide. Good lord. Yeah. Wait, the, wait. There was a smaller version? Yeah, baby showed up, I guess. That, I, I almost didn't catch that. Yeah. Because it was like, mm-hmm. it was so under the radar that they mentioned that, that, that that gets mentioned in the story. Oh, yeah. And then, quote, the reception they received would have sunk a Spanish fleet. But aside from the unearthly noise and the peculiar odor, they did not seem to mind it. But it slowly descended the shaft of the old mine. (laughs) I just... just... Everyone's got their guns and just firing so much into a coal mine. Like, I, I wouldn't do that just from the pure, like, fact that coal mines typically are around gas veins. Uh Uh-huh. Like, the risk of just a, a explosion in your coal mine. Like, was the coal mine... I guess it was abandoned, probably, right? Because it, sa- it says the it shaft the old, of the old coal mine. mine even back then. So it was probably abandoned then. And yeah. uh, just for fun, if you scroll down a little bit, that's a picture of the posse. Wow. I have... I have hardly seen a whiter group of people in my life. Yeah. There's a couple power mustaches. Yeah, that's... They are incredibly white oh yeah like how much how much hair gel do you think they used in those times all of the pomade they used he, all of the pomade cause like that one dude in the, on the far left he's got this like weird cowlick that makes he him kind of okay. look like so look he at the looks expression like of the guy on the <gasps> middle row on the right yeah. side <laughs> he looks stunned yes you know what you know what Guy what? in the middle, he farted. That's why he's got that smirk on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Guy on the right, he's smelling the fart. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Like that's definitely what happened. Everyone else is leaning away from the guy in the middle too, so it's like yeah. there's clear. no way that's not what happened. I believe it. I believe it. That fucking. 
Murphy. <laughs> he looks like he looks like Colonel Sanders. Yes. Because he's got the little ties. The only thing he's uh-huh. missing is the mustache. Yeah. So Which the guys in the front got covered. Lewis found the article and was struck by the fact that such prominent men would put their names to such a story, saying that, quote, these weren't town drunks, he said. All right. I'll argue that point. I will totally argue that point because I know a ton of high-functioning alcoholics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he came to Van Meter... Uh, and with the help of local librarian Jolena Walker, also found the legend had survived uh, the generations in the town's cent- centennial book. Um, Old timers remember it, he said, though their opinions of, of of its authenticity vary. He said that quote those guys wouldn't have wanted that publicity. Uh, Walker said about the eyewitness accounts and saying that was the Van Meter monster real. I mean, here's my thinking. Uh... If it's a bunch of prominent people, they're all let's say they're all friends. Yeah. I would not for a second uh believe that they wouldn't enjoy just screwing with people and seeing how far a prank can go. Oh yeah. Like I'm not going to lie cuz cuz that uh the most recent dollop episode, did you listen to it yet? Bridges of Milwaukee. Yep. <laughs> they had a really good prank in that where <laughs> they <laughs> I'm going to repeat it. I definitely recommend listening to the episode, but basically there were two towns that were warring over bridges. It makes sense in context. Don't worry about it. Um, (laughs) They were warring over bridges and the one town had sent spies into the other town and like started spreading rumors about how the cannon uh, would signal them destroying the, the, the dam. So like at 2 AM one day they shoot the cannon and the other town goes back bug fuck yes like they lose their collective minds and to this like for for in perpetuity uh the one town who pulled the prank said it was the best prank ever and the other town was like it was it was and the other town was like we saved the dam yes <laughs> it was great that was so, a good episode because that story exists I do not think for a second, I would not put it for a second, put it past a bunch of rich white dudes from a town of coming up with an idea while drinking yeah, and then just messing with the town and saying, mm-hmm. yeah, it went down the old coal man. It's all good. Oh yeah. So when, uh, when asked about the, if the monster was real, he said, quote, it depends on your belief system. I know there is good and I know there is evil. Uh, she said, I believe there is a God. So I believe there is a demon. I'm saying it was evil. Walker even drove to the gravel road out to the abandoned brick plant after her uh, consultations with Lewis, saying that, quote, I never want to go up there again, I tell you that. I tried to, to back up the car, and I don't know if it was loose gravel, but I couldn't back up the right way. I'm thinking, what's going on? I'm getting out of here. Wait, what? That's the librarian. But if you can't... That's an easy thing to figure out. Yeah. Like, like really easy. It's called look out the window. But, but did she think that she was like being held in place? I don't know. Cause like, it, yeah, it's an abandoned, if it's an abandoned brick plant, it's probably got gravel. Mm-hmm. Like that's how, like 90% of the point of a brick plant. Like it just produces yeah. gravel on accident. Yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> It produces things that make it hard for cars to drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So Lewis made the rounds in his research, finding strange stories in Van Meter, ghosts at the high school basement, um, <laughs> the, or sorry, ghosts at the high school and the basement of the bar uh, and serpents in the river, uh, none to his surprise, intersecting geographical elements. He says uh, are said to have had uncanny energy, the Raccoon River branches uh, just meet near town. Uh, <laughs> so he said, I still uh, thought uh, this would be uh, be fun, but short. He said we would find out uh, if this is a hoax. There's no doubt in my mind. He I don't know. He just shows up to town and just like wanders around looking for stuff. What's the name of this guy, Lewis? Um, I'm not gonna scroll up that far, but Lewis. Chad Lewis. Yeah. Chad. Lewis. Okay. 
So a fun I, fact about Chad okay. is he abandoned his his career at a nonprofit to chase the paranormal. <sighs> uh, and he has a master's degree in psychology. <laughs> Uh, he gives a bunch, like just every year, he gives a bunch of presentations, and he's written several books. And the latest is Van Meter Monster, or the Van Meter Visitor, which he co-authored with someone else. Also, if you look for the Van Meter oh. Monster on uh, Google, ninety percent of the websites are just snippets from his book. Oh my the god! The exact same press release. It oh was my the god! Worst. So I I just looked up this guy's website. Yes. Um. I'm going to share my screen. It's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I want to read his bio. Oh, 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 it gets better. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it looks like he has a. a I, I don't know. I'm going to post this. It looks like this. a challenge coin. Yeah. I'm going to post this with the episode for sure. Um,. So, he has an about me that he's written. Yes. My name is Chad Lewis, and I am a researcher, author, and lecturer on topics of the strange and unusual. My background is in psychology, and as I did both my bachelor's and master's degree work in the field, but for the last 20 plus years, I have traveled the globe in search of unique and bizarre stories and history. So, he has a list of things that he's investigated after that, um... And it takes up most of the page. So he's gone into chupacabras, both in Puerto Rico and Costa Rica. The Tata Duende, a thing that Brandon's covered in the past. Belize and Guatemala. Mothman, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So I guess he didn't cover the Chicago Mothman. Wendigo, Canada, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. The Van Meter Monster, which we're talking about right now. Uh, the Beast of Bray Road, Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Bigfoot, Canada and United States. Momo, Missouri, UFOs, Kecksburg, Aurora, Area 51, what? Aztec Crash Site, Roswell, UFO Watchtower, UFO Landing Site, UFO Capital of the World, Famous Haunted Places, Gettysburg, New Orleans Cemetery, Basilica Axe Murder House, Summerwind, Bachelors Grove, no comma, too many to list. <laughs> Famous, okay, I already read that one. Haunted Castles and Tunnels, London. Uh, wait, what? Haunted Castles and Tunnels, London. Deadwood, South Dakota. Spook Lights, Hornet Spook Light, Missouri. Polding Spook Light, Michigan. Sea Servants, Bessie. Low Re, Nessie. <laughs> Peppy. <laughs> Flathead Lake Monster, Lake Montana, Mendota, Red Cedar, Devil's Lake, Lake Superior. Vampires, Transylvania. Brandon. What? This guy has been to Transylvania nice. to investigate vampires. That's so good. Uh, also, Skunk Ape, which we had to do an episode about. Uh, Hellhounds, oh, Nicaragua and Belize, Gnomes, and Crop Circles, which he's only gone to Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa for. His... His bio is why he has a store too. Oh, nice! This is a yeah. weird website. Skunk Ape is uh, particularly difficult to uh, research. I tried <laughs> a little I've, bit. I've tried a few times. It's pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, dude, this guy he poses so well. This guy is a creature himself. Media. Oh yes, I-, I love the like like look at this. He's got like a, a tomahawk. Oh no! I feel bad that we're making fun of him, but man, he put it—he put himself out here on this one. I mean, he did that to himself. Oh my god! Watch me battle haunted bridges of Madison County. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty great. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is this is the kind of stuff I love to find. Yeah. When he first started his presentations, people would approach him and privately tell their own stories of monsters or hauntings. Um, he did say that, quote, uh, Now people raise their hand and tell their story. It's more socially acceptable. We really crave some new type of adventure. You can go out to the same hotels and restaurants, and you don't know what city you're in, so people are looking for that little adventure that's something different to seek out. 
Yet strange creatures in local folklore um, throughout recorded history. I don't know where that came from. This is from someone else's article. The uh, <laughs> Jesus. Or he said, there's a long history of belief in giants, particularly in North America. I believe we covered some of that with the uh, yeah. shadow people yep, and yep. the Amphiolith Moor, which isn't North America, but close it's a giant. Enough. And Yeah, close enough. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomena that appears in other places. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and among some Native American populations, said Zora Zimmerman, who has taught folklore classes at Iowa State University, saying that, quote, a legend has a cycle, usually starting with very real eyewitnesses, uh, eyewitness accounts that may be true but are unexplained, so the legend grows. Lewis himself grew up near Eau Claire, I think. How would you say that? Ew? E-A-U. Uh, Ow. Ew. Ow. Ew. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Ow. Lewis you. himself grew up near Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I think that's probably right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I nailed it. Uh, several... I think it's. I think it's literally Eau Claire. Eau Claire. It might be Eau Claire because they uh, have the they have the pronunciation guide on uh, yeah. Wikipedia. I will say this: the pronunciation guides on Wikipedia. I know that it's supposed to be like IPA slash English. It's like a pronunciation international yeah. phonetic alphabet, but man. It's unreadable. <laughs> oh, I believe it. It's French, so it's like eau de toilette. Oh, Eau Claire. Okay, I got yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so he grew up near Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where several UFO sightings bubbled up in the 1960s and 70s, saying that, quote, When I started, I was fascinated uh, what makes people believe or not. Over the years, it changed a bit. Uh, now I'm just as interested in the cause as the effect, he said. Uh, after nearly 20 years, I am left with more questions than answers. Every time I have a theory or, expl- or explanation, I'm back to zero. So, I have never been more interested in the effect of something than the cause of something. Like, I have yeah. always been interested in what has caused this problem or caused yeah. this thing. I-, I, feel like that's a- I feel like that's a very weird thing for somebody who has a master's in psychology to say. That's the kind of thing someone says when they're being interviewed and they're like I'm gonna say some cool stuff yeah that definitely yeah. sounds like that definitely stinks of I'm gonna say something profound yeah. that I didn't even think about very much so <laughs> uh, so Lewis ran through the likely scenarios uh, that it was a hoax he dismissed uh, what dressed up prankster could survive the firepower um, <laughs> assuming that they actually shot yeah uh, a strange unknown creature could have emerged from the mines, but there is no proof of it. He's still hoping that plaster cast is uh, in a van meter attic. Saying that, quote, it was an era when anything was possible. Science was starting to gain momentum. In fact, they had just discovered the mountain gorilla. So the beast in the jungle was real. He said that, quote, people were open to the fact that anything could happen. So, okay, I want to stop right there just because mountain gorillas were discovered right Mm -hmm. that that's always that's a that's a common fallacy that people are like hey gorillas were discovered in 1900 yeah cool we hadn't explored that area yet yeah like awesome whatever that doesn't mean that you're gonna find the fucking mothman in your backyard oh yeah like you don't have to connect (laughs) everything just because thing a was found doesn't mean it's associated with thing b yeah, we oh yeah. cool. We found the coelacanth. Nice, but it had a specific set of circumstances that allowed it to live. Oh yes. And, and also super cool. Can I just throw that out there? Coelacanth, super cool. Armored it is fish. super cool. It is super cool. Relicanth is based on the coelacanth. Oh, ah, okay. I didn't know that. Yep. Shoot. That's why it's called relicanth. Cuz Yeah, I just never coel- connected those very close dots. It's a pretty cool Pokémon that doesn't really yeah. do anything. Yeah, they should have made it cooler. I think it's a rock water type, if my memory is correct. You are correct. My memory is very bad, though. So, yeah, it's got rock head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, He found little more than the legend, but in visiting the mine location, he also found unease. John Jungman is a farmer who owns a pasture where the local coal mine is covered up. He took Lewis out to examine it. He told Lewis that he always had a funny feeling about the place. But his son, John, laughed it off. Saying <laughs> that, quote, we call it the Brickyard Monster. Uh, quote, he's making it sensational. It's a fun legend and all, 
uh, fun to scare kids or uh, for campfire stories. So basically, basically what he's saying is nobody takes that story seriously. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Others take a more scientific approach in their skepticism. Matthew Sharps, a professor of psychology at California State University of Fresno, uh, researched uh, eyewitness memory and says one person's account grows as it is passed on, which is true. Uh, yep. The story becomes part of the memory. Obviously, these things aren't real, but people really see them, so they behave uh, towards them as though they are real. They are eyewitness memory errors, he said. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely parts of my life that I know for a fact didn't happen that way, but I believe they happened a different way. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Yes. Like, it, but it's the problem with memory is it's so insidious that you literally don't realize that you're rewriting the memory. Oh, yeah. And that's super, like, that's very common. Um, the further out you get from a memory, time-wise, yeah. the more strongly you feel that you remember it properly and you just exponentially like remember it wrong. Yeah. It's just, um, it's, yeah. it's compounding wrongness. Yes. Cause it's oh, not, yeah. and it's, it's not a linear scale either because it's like every time that you remember something wrong, you remember even more of it wrong. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, he did say that people with tendencies toward depression, uh, attention def deficit hyperactivity disorder or disassociation are more prone to see UFOs or creatures. His research shows and the encounters can be harmful. Uh, uh, just from people that I know, that seems accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to just say, from an anecdotal point of view, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, he did say that, quote, it can be a life-changing experience. They go around telling people, and they think that you're crazy. So now I've got to prove Bigfoot is there. Now I'm driving around with American Bigfoot Project printed out on my van and telling my wife that I'll be done as soon as I find Bigfoot. <laughs> this is great. This is yeah. like, this is a perfect, um, what is it, subtweet? Uh -huh. Where it's like, he's definitely calling out somebody. Yes. There is somebody he's like roasting with this uh -huh. there's no doubt in my mind that someone is getting roasted on by this statement and it's absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. he said that lewis doesn't see the harm in fact even though he said he's unsure what happened uh those fall nights in 1903 in van meter uh seeking the answer was more important than finding it what does that mean uh i think he just need to go out there for himself i don't know exactly what that means okay sure yeah, I guess I guess it's the whole the journey, not the destination. But at the same time, that is weird to me. Yes, uh, his weird legends can rekindle interest in local history, such as coal mining and old brickyards, and help understand the lifestyles and mindset of citizens back then. It can even draw tourists. Um, I read all of those words out of order. It can yep. even be a tourist draw. I'm dyslexic. I don't care. It's it's the same. It literally is the same. The, yeah. the thing, the way you read it, it literally reads the same. It's a weird sentence. I know, but that's not how it's written. I gotta read it. I know. Right. That's true. Um, the people of Van Meter saved this story for the rest of us. He said they are doomed to it. I guess. What? <laughs> what? I, I don't know. They're doomed to that. I don't. That's I don't. such a. That's such an interesting choice of words that he's used. Yeah. He's he seems like a dramatic person. Well, I mean, we've looked at his website. Yes, it, that's it's true. it's clearly a dramatic person's website. Yeah, on Coast to Coast AM, John okay. B. Wells sort of alluded to the fact that the creature might have been a UFO, more of a machine than an animal. He based his theory on the fact that while several people took shots at it, the creature seemed unaffected by the bullets. <laughs> like that's, I had to throw that in. I found that, and I was like, oh no. I feel like he's made some assumptions. Very many. Story. Um, but before we do anything else, I want to I want to highlight this image of the creature that you have here. Yes. It's basically okay, so it's kind of like the pterodactyls from Jurassic Park 3. Yes. A little bit. Um the eyes are soulless. It looks kind of like a skeleton. Yes. 
and it has just a beam of light, like a laser beam, not a flashlight, a laser beam emitting out of its head. Oh, yeah. Which which is why I said, this is definitely a Pokemon. <laughs> it is. Like, it's not a, it's not a great Pokemon because it's missing that like, uh, um, it's missing that spark that makes a good Pokemon. If you know what yeah. I mean, because there's like, the key to a good Pokemon is it's not quite the the animal it's based on. It looks like Aerodactyl got into some bad stuff. Yeah, it looks like Aerodactyl's been on hard times. Yeah, like. That's exactly what it looks like. He's had a, a rough couple couple years, basically. Couple of years. It looks like Aerodactyl's had a rough decade. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But he still knows Hyper Beam. It's not as strong as it used to be, but he's still no. got it. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and screw you for saying otherwise. I'm going to prove to you I can use Hyper Beam mm -hmm. and just blind some people. That's... <laughs> It's actually a very accurate description like of that's, that picture. That's that's the that's the yeah. vibe I'm getting off of it. I'm getting some aerodactyl like like retired aerodactyl energy off of that. Yeah. Like it, it's practically at the point where in a couple of years it's probably gonna just you know fade away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Pokemon. Uh, I know we're at the end of the episode. Don't spoil the new Pokemon for me. I'm, I have not had an opportunity to play it yet. I'm probably going to play it a little bit later. I'm not going to spoil the Pokemon for you. I'm talking about old Pokemon. Okay. So, um, remember Mega Evolutions? Yes. So, okay, um, there is a Pokemon that got a Mega Evolution uh -huh. that I didn't realize got a Mega Evolution until, like, a couple... Wait, who's that? Tell me, right now. Arduino. Who, You'll, which was so, Arduino? So, do you did you play uh, Black and White? Yeah. So Arduino's this one. Wait, the little no. Yeah, this Pokemon got a Mega Evolution, and all it is is literally just its ears change position, and it gets white a white coat instead of a pink one. Why? Yo, I'm looking. at... Why did Arduino get a Mega Evolution? I don't know. It's like. Most of the other Mega Evolutions, I can understand why they got Mega Evolutions, but Arduino doesn't make a single bit of sense. No. Like, although I will say, I think my favorite Mega Evolution design to this day is Mega Ampharos. That is a thing of beauty. I, I named my... I played, When I played X and Y, I named my Ampharos uh, Fabio, because that's probably the only thing that you could name in that, that Pokemon. You made a good decision there. It's that is good, true. It's the perfect name. It's yes. the perfect name. So, but yeah. Um, also, this Diancie Pokemon got a Mega Evolution, but I don't even. I never got a Diancie. I don't know. Pokemon's weird. The 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 uh, legendary Pokemon have gotten to be really ridiculous for me. Oh yeah. So, um. Anywho, do you got anything else to say about this probable hoax? I don't. I don't know if it was a hoax. I think it was a lot of people drank a lot and shot at stuff and then had to come up with an excuse. Yeah, that that honestly sounds like it. It sounds like a bunch of people trying to explain their uh, bad behavior. Yeah. It's like, um, oh, it's like uh, that episode of South Park where um, Tiger Woods, like, like with Tiger Woods being a sex addict, quote unquote. Yeah. And Stan and Butters end up going into, like... No, it was Kyle and Butters end up becoming... Like, going into a sex addict uh, oh, I remember rehab. That. Yes. And it's like, oh, it's it's caused by an alien. We gotta shoot the alien. <laughs> and everyone's like, whoa. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting off of this story. <laughs> That's basically it's, it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, everyone's like, oh, I'm finally free. What what are you talking about? You you didn't you just shot at thin air. <laughs> oh, imagine if Oh, now I got a really sad thought. What if it was like a cover up? Wait. Like No. Like a like a uh a I'm Twin Peaks no. style no. cover up. No. <laughs> just no. What if it was Twin Peaks? The I had to watch a training video at work the other day. Yeah. And the whole time I just thought 
man, David Lynch really got weird because they tried, to, <laughs> they tried to make the training video look like it. It seems like someone's trying too hard to be David Lynch. Oh man, you see, that's that's a that right there, that's a mistake. Yeah, absolute mistake. <laughs> trying to be David Lynch is the path of madness. Yes. Because that dude, there is something, there is something definitely wrong with him. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a, I'm concerned way. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, Anywho, uh, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, which, cool. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, we're cryptopediacast.com our Instagram and Twitter are at cryptopediacast uh, if you want to email us it's cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com all these links that we're slinging are on the um, on the cryptopediacast website and some of them are in the show notes um, we have a Patreon the Patreon basically just lets it be so we can so we can afford to host the podcast uh and we don't have to do ads, which is cool, mm-hmm. um, because ads are also really weird with podcasts and all sorts of stuff. Ads are weird. I do miss the uh, fake ads that I used to do, but they were also work. Yeah, they are. I, I was I tried to come up with a few, but I was bad at it. I was real <laughs> bad at it. Yeah. I, I threw out a couple, a bunch of ideas. Um, on Patreon, we have multiple tiers. Uh, if you want to see the show notes... Or the the, sh- the script. I think it's a $2 and up tier. If you want to hear special podcast episodes, which uh, I posted this SCP episode there first. Um, but then I posted it to the main feed because we didn't have an episode last week. So whatever. No, things um, happened. Yeah, things happened. Um, but anyways, the people who are in the, the tier that get those free episodes, the Jackalopes, they get a shout out. Woo! And we've got Clay Sinclair... And Marty Von Party, who yes. last time, uh, basically what happened was Patreon's interface is terrible. <laughs> and it looked like we lost people, but we didn't. I don't know. I think they changed no. something in how everything They works. have been with us for a minute, like a while. So like, yeah. we appreciate that, definitely. I, I think, I think I've, been, I've been actually thinking about, like, things that I can do. Things I can do to thank them but we'll, i don't want to i don't want to commit to anything yet we'll fly to your house and have dinner for you no, mm, brandon <coughs> john will brandon. cook you dinner I, okay do they want food poisoning <laughs> i'm not good at cooking the only thing i know how to cook i know how to cook two things steak poorly and uh i'm okay at making stew there's i know people i can get you cooking lessons i know you can but those are the two things I know and the things I'm comfortable with. I used to know how to cook fried rice, and I used to know how to cook chicken how and broccoli. How do you used to know how to make fried rice? You, you, you fry the rice. I haven't done it in a while. I Excuses. used to know how to make rice aroni real good, too. <laughs> it is the San Francisco <laughs> treat. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, I make a mean chicken, though. You do. You, uh, what was it during Fourth of July? I think you made some. You made yeah. that and steak. They were both phenomenal. Well, I made bulk chicken and steak. They were good. But yeah, I liked it. I liked it. It was a good. That was a good batch of food. Yes. <laughs> um. But yeah. So if you enjoy the podcast, uh, think about supporting if you're interested. Um, rate, review, subscribe, and of course send monster quests and stories. Um, as well as definitely send uh sources. Yeah. <laughs> the longer we do the this podcast, the harder it becomes to find good sources. And we still oh, have yeah. although we do still have some heavy hitters to cover. Like I think the we heavy do... hitters are the hard ones, right? Yeah. So there's so much less information on the big cryptids than there are the obscure cryptids. Well, because it's it's like more spread out, right? Yeah. Like it's one of those things. Whereas like um typically what will happen with the smaller crypt is, is one person will like super focus on it and yeah. they'll do this whole write up on it and it will be the entire story whereas like with bigfoot for example you've got like individual stories yeah and it's more about telling stories about those vignettes than mm-hmm. it is about telling stories about the entire story 
Yeah. Right. And then like Nessie's weird because there's a lot of misinformation around Nessie because it's become a tourism thing. Right. So it's beneficial to um, Loch Ness to have it be a little bit more mysterious. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of that's involved in that. Um, then there's other there's other cryptids like the Wendigo, which are a little trickier because they're like cultural stories, right? Yeah, they're cultural and, with a lot of other stuff around them. Yeah, so it's 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 tricky to do those kinds of episodes because like uh, cultural things always make me nervous because I don't want to do yeah. them, I don't want to do them dirty. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> You don't want to give it the proper, like, give it the effort that it deserves. Yeah. Yeah, and and sometimes it's hard to give that effort, which with the two-week thing, it's a little easier to do. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. <laughs> I like that awkward pause. All right. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. Um, as always, I'm on Instagram, Mew2057, a name I made up on Game FAQs. Uh, my Twitter <laughs> is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And that's not even my worst internet handle. <laughs> I was unaware there was a Game Facts thing, and we've known each other for uh, a bit. Oh, yeah, I don't even a want bit. to say. I've started saying, like, numbers of years I've known people, and it made me feel so bad. Just yeah. so old. We're getting close. For, we're getting perilously close to the two-decade mark. Yeah, <laughs> it's bad. Like, a kid tried to show me um, a jump scare in Roblox the other day and handed me the phone. And it was like, no, you're doing it wrong. And I didn't think about it, and then I felt bad about me. I literally turned to this kid and was like... I'm not playing it wrong. I've been playing video games for longer than you've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not the fact. <laughs> for like several, yeah. like, like, yo, you're seven. I've been playing multiple times your lifespan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our art <laughs> was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. <laughs> I just, oh, man. <laughs> like, I was a little bit too snarky for, like, talking to a child. But I was still like, don't tell me how to play video games. This is this is kind of like uh, the, the don't, don't speak the deep magic to me. I was there when it was written. Yeah. Oh, talking deep <laughs> magic. So... Yeah. My friend Kevin mm-hmm. does magic professional. Uh like as a, like he gets paid and stuff. Like and, GPT? Uh Magic the Gathering. I don't know GPT. Yeah. He tells me stuff I zone out. Um But he the first set came in and he's getting more because I told him when they come in you have to get me more, but he has his own uh tokens. Yeah. Like MTG token cards. That are him, like that are of him, but like amazing. official from and it was like you I'm getting one. The next cause he just got a batch in, he gave them all out, so the next batch that comes in, I'm like, You you're giving me that. That's awesome. Yes. That's actually really cool. Oh man. Um Brawl's a thing in magic online. Anyways, uh <laughs> as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are gonna get weird and maybe talk about things. I don't know where I'm going with this. It's it's I'm I'm done. Yeah, no, it's just weird. <laughs>